efforts to, to bring the pandemic to an end. And that's very much true now as we see new variants emerge that will continue to us in some countries. In terms of international travel, we believe that all essential travel should be allowed to continue. Um, but it's up to countries. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It is very hard to believe. Sam Sally says she was tricked into... T With the intention of something good to happen. I'm not a bad person. It's seven o'clock on Wednesday, the 27th of January. You're listening to Today on Radio 4, Michelle Hussain and Justin Webb. The head respondency like never before. Analysts, analysis for the BBC says one and a half million people excluded from proportionately affected and cry out for the healing of these inequalities. They, they talk about the need to support each other and to advisory panel predicted there could be another 50,000 deaths from coronavirus in the UK and said that for every fatality, probably four or five other people who survived would be damaged by the disease. Bereavement support charities have written to the Health Secretary calling for more funding in the light of what they describe as the terrible toll of 100,000 deaths from COVID-19. They say some of the £500 million which has been allocated to mental health services in England in the government spending review should be used to support bereaved families. Here's our health editor, Hugh Pym. The National Bereavement Alliance, which represents a range of charities, says deaths have been heavily felt in disadvantaged and deprived communities and there is an increased need for health services. They quote academic research suggesting more than 80% of bereaved people since the start of the pandemic have had limited contact with family and friends and two-thirds have experienced social isolation or loneliness. They say there are long waiting lists for support, but that some services providing advice and guidance don't have sufficient resources. They argue that more money is needed for groups signposting services, that is directing people to the most appropriate agencies to meet their needs. The Alliance says requests for funding in England were turned down in the November spending review. A Department of Health spokesperson said there was a commitment to ensure those who were grieving had access to support during the pandemic and grants had been made to relevant charities. Analysis of the government's two main economic support schemes during the pandemic has found that one and a half million people who've missed out on help could be included at a relatively cheap cost. The research carried out for BBC News by the Institute for Fiscal Studies says there are clear injustices in the way the schemes work. The Treasury says they've been designed to prevent fraud and target support at those who need it. Our economics correspondent, Andy Verity reports. The government expects to spend upwards of £90 billion on the furlough scheme and the self-employed income support scheme, which have helped to save millions of jobs, but millions more haven't been able to access any help through the two schemes. Among them is mum of two Kim Kingston from Southsea, who after her husband died in 2018, used money from his pension to develop her beauty therapy business. Because the pension was more than half her income that year, she was told she wouldn't get anything under the self-employed scheme. I was absolutely blown away. I still cannot get my head around the fact that a dead person's income or money is then seen as an income. How, how can it be an income? It's, it's a deceased pension. Research for the BBC by the Standard Life Foundation found the policy of hotel quarantine would be extended to include them. The Transport Secretary Grant Sharps had argued for a targeted approach to quarantine, whereas the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, had favoured its more widespread use. She'll set out the details to the Commons today, including the timescale and who will be exempt. Labour has said that juries in criminal trials in England are well-being and self-esteem compared with boys. The report by the think tank, the Education Policy Institute and the Prince's Trust calls on the government to act quickly to improve mental health support for schools in England. Here's our education correspondent, Sean Dilley. Children's mental health, the report authors say, is a crisis that's likely to be made worse by lockdown and school closures in England because of increased isolation and fewer opportunities to exercise. Their research used data from approximately 5,000 young people born in the year 2000 who were questioned at the age of 11, 14 and 17. It found that well-being declined for all children as they got older, but they identified a gender gap. After the age of 11, girls experienced significantly lower levels of self-esteem. By 14, one in three said they felt unhappy about their appearance. The researchers found that very frequent use of social media had a negative effect on the well-being of all children, but impacted the self-esteem of girls more. 
The Department for Education has said it is aware of the impact lockdown is having on young people's well-being. It said it planned to announce details of a mental health action group soon. Ten ink and watercolour maps charting the defeat of the Spanish Armada are to remain in the UK. They were drawn soon after the English victory in 1588 and were unknown to many historians until last year when it was revealed they were being sold to a foreign buyer. The government blocked their export and now £600,000 has been raised to keep them. But the event in September will be the first of its kind. The RHS says visitors can expect the best of autumn horticulture, with seasonal highlights including salvias, asters, dahlias, grasses and fruits and vegetables. Harry Bly. And that brings us to nine minutes past seven. We are marking as a nation a simply terrible milestone this morning. 100,000 lives lost. One of the highest death rates in the world. The context today, of course, is of a gradually improving figure for cases and hospital admissions and, of course, the success of the vaccine programme so far. But nothing can change what has happened. The Prime Minister said we did everything we could, as if no mistakes were made, no actions taken or not naked, taken that he regrets. We will hear in an hour's time from the government. Let us talk now to Jonathan Ashworth, the uh, Shadow Health Secretary, who's on the line. Good morning to you. Good morning. And it is, first of all, just simply a, a, an awful milestone. And you think, don't you, not of politics, but of the individuals. I, I mean, it's horrific and it's, it's difficult to put into words how horrific it is. I mean, I mean, we're, we're roughly 12 months on from the first case being identified in the United Kingdom. To think that we've lost 100,000 people in the past 12 months is, is horrendous. I mean, and then we talk about statistics, but every individual would have had families friends who are grieving and will be grieving particularly today i suspect and of course within that cohort of people we've lost we've lost thousands who were in care homes and i'm afraid were left exposed and unprotected we've lost over 880 health and social care staff who were out there on the front of the government. I mean, this is a virus which has swept across the world with speed and severity, and it continues to spread ferociously. All right, the case rates are, are coming down, but it, we've still got huge numbers of people sick with this virus and in hospital. But, but monumental mistakes have been made. We have had a litany of errors in the last 12 months, and he didn't have to make these mistakes. You know, he had scientific advice encouraging him to go into lockdowns. He pushed that back. All right, he pushed it back on the first occasion. Perhaps that's understandable because nobody wanted to take, him, take us into a lockdown. But it, a second time, oh, the borders, we're still debating the borders policy today, 12 months later. And of course, sick people who are in low paid jobs, who are disproportionately impacted by this virus because they cannot work from home on laptops and join Zoom calls, we still don't pay. Who, who's still are critical of the government, but the suggestion is that actually at every stage, right up to today in the question of quarantines, and perhaps you want to tell us what Labour's policy is, you have pushed for things only when you've thought they were obviously going to happen. No, no, I, d I, don't, I don't think that's fair. Uh, you know, as soon as we saw, for example, in the autumn that uh, the virus was rising uh, at, at huge levels. We, set, we called for a circuit break lockdown and the, and the Boris Johnson ridiculed us and said, no, you can't do that. And then he was forced into it. Back in the summer, when a lot of epidemiologists and medical scientists were saying, look, yes, yes, we've managed to push down infections, but there are... Well, we, we, well he's not, you don't oppose it as such because there wasn't a vote in the House of Commons. On no, it. but, but did you clearly, saying, did you clear, can you point to somewhere where you said this is a bad scheme, it is, it should not no, but, happen, it's dangerous? No, no, but we were focusing on over the summer, no. testing, tracing and isolation. That was our priority because we said if you can fix this now, use this summer right. months where the virus levels are relatively lower, fix let, it now to prepare us for the winter. Let me ask you about what is happening now and the question of, of um, well, two things actually. First, on the one dose of the vaccine being given out and the second dose being delayed, can you be absolutely clear, do you support the government or do you oppose the government on that? We support them. Right, OK, so that's absolutely clear. You think it's a good thing and the, the BMA on this occasion, the doctor, from a list of countries that are particularly dangerous well, I think that's probably a mistake. We'll have to wait to see what the government actually announced later this afternoon. But it's a mistake because what we now know is that 12 months ago, when the government for a few 